King of the Cowboys, Trigger, his golden palomino, and Dale Evans, Queen of the West, with Pat Brady, his comical sidekick, and Roy's wonder dog, Bullet. trouble with this right stirrup. Will you see if you can fix it for me? Sure. No, sir. They ain't nothing like travel to educate a person. Now, your Aunt Emmeline, Dale, if she hadn't wanted Roy to take a look at her ranch, we'd have never known this part of the country was on Earth. <laughs> That's right, Pat. Roy, I can't thank you fellas enough for coming with me. Well, we needed a vacation, Dale. Hey, how's that? Fine, thank you. Nellie Bell! She's getting away! insurance and sleep nights. Worried about crop failure, fire, loss of cattle, buy hard luck insurance. See Ben Pearson. You know, that's what I need for Nellie Bell. I ain't had nothing but hard luck since I bought that moving junk pile. <laughs> well, if we're ever going to get to town, we better start moving. Come here, Trigger. Come on, Bullet. Coming up. Here, lean against that until the ground stops going around. Okay, buddy. Is he all right? Come on. Sheriff will take care of them. Did they knock out your new tooth, Ralph? No, it's okay, Helen. I don't know what this is all about, but two against one isn't my idea of fair play. Who were those men, anyway? 
Slip Macon and Lee Jennings. Why were they picking on you? Well, because we had 400 head of cattle that had been rustled. Yeah, and we, we were trying to collect on our hard luck insurance. Hard luck insurance? We'd have stopped Graham's belly aching for good if those two fellas hadn't horned in. And one of them was a fighting fool. You had your guns, didn't you? What are you using them for, ornaments? But this fellow was wearing two. And you don't draw on a two-gun man unless you're tired of living. You know that. We shouldn't have rustled Graham's cattle, Ben. Oh, shut up. You know it don't pay to be too greedy. I told you it was safe. I didn't get Graham's insurance money until after the cattle was rustled. That's why I had him put the money in the mail instead of receiving it personal like he wanted. Now, Graham and the fellows be run to the law. Then you'll get there first. Now get down to the sheriff's office and put in a complaint against him. That's fine, but what do we say? Exactly what I tell you to. Now listen. Now, sir, I never thought I'd be shaking hands with Roy Rogers. We've heard a lot about you, even up in this neck of the woods. Well, Sheriff Hadley, this is Miss Evans and Pat Brady. How do, sir? Uh, I'm awfully glad to know you. Thank you. And you, sir. Howdy. Now, what can I do for you, Mr. Rogers? You can toss Slip Macon and Lee Jennings into Hoosgow for beating up on Ralph Graham. What? Yeah, they were trying to get out of paying off on their hard luck insurance. Macon and Jennings? Oh, I can't believe it. Ask Mr. Graham. They almost killed him. Yeah, they would have, too, if me and Roy hadn't gotten there in the nick of time. Why, I looked over the situation and walked right up to the Slip Macon, and I knocked him for a loop. About the size of a donut. And then I... I... Well, somebody got knocked for a loop. I can't understand it. The hard luck insurance company paid off when Jim Randall's woodshed burned down. Cash on the barrel. Well, they're, they're a big company. An, an eastern company. They've got offices in New York. It says so right here. A thousand dollars for ten thousand insurance. And payments are cash. Well, cash. Just one payment and then you've got nothing to worry about the rest of your life. Oh, it's been a blessing to this county. Some of the boys have got their policy framed, like a diploma. It's just that comforting to look at. Arrest them, Sheriff. Arrest us! Why, you two-time a double cross. Oh, just a minute, just a minute. I'll handle this. Let's hear your side of the story. Grave tried to collect on the policy before it was paid for. And when we rode out to explain it to him, he drew a gun on us. That's right. While we were trying to take the gun away from him, these two hombres waded in and tried to beat us up. These two hombres just happened to be Roy Rogers and Pat Brady. Roy Rogers? I don't care who they are. We have got a legal claim against them, and furthermore, we'll bring Ben Pearson in here to prove it. Yeah, and we'll bring our partner here to prove it. Well, that's heavy. <laughs> oh, listen. Have you got everything, Pat? Yeah, that's all of it, Dale. That's all of it. Are you sure you can make it all right? Yeah, Dale, sure, sure. Sir Galahad himself. <laughs> oh. Well, I've been in better looking establishments. You know, your urging that sheriff to call New York made him downright hostile, Roy. Well, I may be all wrong, but this one payment deal worries me. Those fellas could collect the money and clear out before anyone even got suspicious. Yeah. And that story they told about Ralph Graham pulling a gun on them. Graham wasn't even toting a gun. I think I'll wire a description of those birds to the warden and ranger headquarters. Well, it looks like the clerk went out for lunch. Dale, get me a room. I don't know how long we'll have to stay here. Right, Roy. If he gets in touch with the warden, the game's up. Not yet. Well, what do we do? Use our brains and work fast. Let's get out the back way. Come on. Get him off right away, will you, please? Yes, sir. Just in time. He was fixing to send a war to the warden and the ranger. Slip, get busy. Lay keep an eye on the street. Right. You know, I hate to do this. I was hoping we wouldn't have to stoop to safe cracking again. 
you ain't got it. Here it is. Good. Put it in Roger's saddlebag like I told you. Can't we keep it? Now who's been greedy? Besides, you can't spend it in jail. You want the door up first? No, leave it open. I want it to look like robbery. Now you boys get over to the hotel. Wait there till you hear the commotion. Then come a-running. Okay. Hello, operator. Give me the Excelsior Hotel. Well, that clerk must have ordered the blue plate special. He sure didn't go out for no ham on rye. Hmm. No one here to answer it. Hmm. Wonder who it is. It could be awful important. Hello? Who? No, Roy Rogers isn't here. This is Ralph Graham. Tell Rogers to get out here right away. I'm... No, no! Come on, Pat. We gotta find Roy. Roy! Roy, get out to the Graham Ranch, quick. Ralph Graham was trying to phone you, and it sounded like somebody slugged him. Called himself Roy Rogers was hot tailing for the skyline. Of all the dirty frame ups. Calls himself Roy Rogers, huh? Well, we'll see about that. You know, with the Wells Fargo office, take care of Mike. You go for the doctor. Joe, stand guard. Don't let anybody touch anything till I get back. Come on, Ben. You're going with me. The sheriff swallowed that cock and bull story like it had butter on it. We gotta warn Roy. <laughs> No, Mr. Rogers, Ralph didn't phone you. I put him to bed and he's still there. Well, thanks, Mrs. Graham. seen us coming, Sheriff, and tried to double back on his tracks. Search him. I tell you, he's got it on him. Search his saddlebags, too. What's this all about? You ought to know. Get down. Well, if this is an arrest, you better have plenty of evidence. Roy, the Wells Fargo safe has been robbed. Yeah, they're framing you, Roy. Yes. And here's the money that was stolen. It was planted by those crooks. Who's a crook? They're trying to frame Roy before he gets them, Sheriff. Yeah, they sure are. Quiet. Quiet, everybody. I'm a law around here. Let's get back into town and find out what this is all about. Sheriff, I told you I went to the Wells Fargo office to send a couple of telegrams. What telegrams are you talking about? Nobody found none. Then you destroyed them. Ask the operator. Check with Ralph Graham about the phone call. Uh, stop telling me my business. I'll do all of that and more. But in the meantime, I'm not taking any foolish chances. You can't lock him up. In you go. You lunk-headed lame brain, that's Roy Rogers. Maybe it is, and maybe it ain't. Dale, call Captain Ellis of the ranger post and have him come over here and identify me. You can't use my phone. I'm waiting on a call from the hard luck insurance company's New York office. Then I'll use the phone at the hotel. Roy, I'm dreaming. I'm having nightmares. This can't be you on the other side of this open grill work. 
I won't be here for long, Captain. Sheriff Hadley speaking. Yeah? Yeah. Thank you. That number in New York, don't ask. Well, of course not, Sheriff. There's three hours difference in time between here and back east. The office must be closed, but you can get them the first thing tomorrow morning. We better get back to work, boys. If you need us for anything, Sheriff, we'll be at the hotel. Let's go. Well, that's that. We got Rogers just where we want him. Before he gets out of jail, we'll have all the ranches cleaned of their dough. The deal's off, boys. We're getting out of here now. But why? When the sheriff phones New York, your cousin will know what to say. Sure, he'll make like he's president of the company. That part of it's all right, Lee, but you forgot something. Roger sent for that ranger. So what? He can't get Rogers off now. Not after being caught with that stolen dough. No, but he can identify me. The last time I was in the pen, it was Captain Ellis that put me there. Now, let's get that money out of the safe and get out of here. Sheriff's gone to the Graham Ranch. Start sawing your way out. Well, I can't break the law, Pat, just to save myself a night in jail. Well, you can't stay in that flea bag. Roy? Yeah? Roy, those crooks are leaving town. I just saw them leaving the hotel. They're headed east. Now you really got to get out of here. Mucho Prado. I sure do. The sheriff left the keys to the cell, but he locked the front door when he left. Well, how about me shooting the lock off the door? Oh, Pat, you'd have the whole town on your back before you could even blow down the gun barrel. Yeah, especially after the Wells Fargo stick up. Listen, Pat. Can you get Nellie Bell to backfire? Can I? That old girl do anything I tell her. Leave it to us, Roy. Be careful. Pat, back that jeep down the street a few yards. You're going to draw too much attention to me when I shoot the lock. Okay, but just act nonchalant. Now backfire, Nelly Bell. Backfire, you lump of kid! What's the matter? You having trouble with the accelerator? Oh, no, I think it's a tube root of Fortescue with a short in the windshield, but it's all right. <laughs> huh? I say that the head won't fit on the distributor because the cap is rotated out of fine, but I can fix it. <laughs> I know what the trouble is. It's the carburetor. Yeah, that's what it is. It's the carburetor. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Just for Roy, Nellie Bell. Backfire just for Roy. Those crooks are getting away. Why, you? Okay. But from now on, we're quits. We're through. She's mighty sweet. And then sometimes she'll talk back. Thanks, Dale. Get in touch with the sheriff at the Graham Ranch and follow me as soon as you can. Right.
Shango. Well, this time we'll put him in a hole that he won't get out of. And in a way, we won't swing for it. Let's go. Oh, that gum, you old female. Blast your tires and wheels. <laughs> You'd come busting in here. That's why we're hitting the brush. Take the bullets, too. Go on, take the bullets. your Russell cattle, but here's the money the crooks collected for them. Now we can pay the taxes, Ralph. You and Miss Dale and, and Mr. Brady have saved our lives in more ways than one, Mr. Rogers. Oh, it wasn't nothing. Why, as soon as I sized up the situation, I just waded right in and... Uh. Uh, well, I took those crooks over to Plainsville, like you said, Mr. Rogers. I sure don't want any lynching around here. Hello, Ralph, Miss Graham. There's the insurance money. Yeah, the boys will certainly be glad to get that back. I wish that could have been on the level. Say, why don't the ranchers around here start their own hard luck insurance company? Yes, that money would give you a good start. Then you could still sleep nights. Say, that's a, that's a swell idea. I'll talk to Lou Watkins over at the bank right away. We'll go with you. It looks like everyone in this county is going to be in your debt, Mr. Rogers. Well, I, uh, I was a hollow horn fool to... I think that you ever pulled that robbery. Forget it, Sheriff. Under the circumstances, I would have suspected myself. <laughs> Hollow Horned is right. Imagine him tossing Roy into one of these flea emporiums with the reputation Roy's made for himself. A man can't rest on the reputation he's made, Pat. He has to keep on making it every day of his life. Roy's right. A reputation's just like wallpaper. It can be pasted on but it has to have something solid underneath to make it stick. Oh, he's got plenty to make it stick. Why, he's almost as well known as me. And everybody knows Pat Brady. Wow! I'd hate to have to sleep on that place. Hey! It's locked! It's... Well, don't just stand there. <laughs> I can't stay in jail. You ruined my reputation. <laughs>
Happy trails to you. Keep smiling until then. Happy trails.